here we have the examples from the rest candle framework here that allows you to do a really simple inference by just passing in cargo run dash dash example and the large language model like for example falcon uh, or bert etc now one of the things that's cool is that you can pass in the dash dash features cuda to make it use the gpu which obviously is going to give you much better performance uh, for inference so here's the problem though where would you get that gpu fortunately with GitHub code spaces, you can actually get access to a GPU. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this is accomplished. So first up here, I have a repo and inside I have a dev container. This dev container contains three files. First up, we have an ENV. So this could be, for example, my passwords, etc., for a local environment. And then I also have a Docker file. This Docker file does all of the heavy lifting for this code space. And let's go ahead and walk through some of the things it does. So first up, we have the Rust uh, dev container here, which is nice because I don't have to worry about Rust anymore. Then uh, we go through here and we install some packages, including things like Clang, LLD, etc. Now there's some other things that are also pretty important that you may want to install depending on your project. So I have FFmpeg for doing things with audio. For example, if I'm transcoding, I have a GCC. And then here's another big one is the CUDA uh, tools as well. So the CUDA toolkit and then CUDA NVCC. Once I've got all these in here, then uh, I can actually also do other things. For example, maybe automatically create a virtual environment for Python and get rid of that uh, problem. So the other configuration component here is something called devcontainer.json. And in this uh, section here, this is really critical to get the CUDA environment working here, is that I actually am able to say install CUDA uh, true. And so this can use both CUDA and also the uh, CUDA in. And if we look down here as well, I can also customize my environment with, let's say, post setup operations, as well as extensions like uh, Copilot or VS Code Makefile tools, etc. Now, if we look at this post create command, this means that after the code spaces is set up, it'll run these commands. So what do I have in there? Let's go ahead and look at what I do. Ah, okay. What I do is actually set the path to CUDA just to make sure it's all uh, good there. And then I finally write that out to the bash RC. So this is nice because that means that in theory, if someone forks my environment, let's say somebody else that wants to run code spaces, it should just work and they can actually get things cooking. So how would I actually start a code space? Well, if you go here, what you would do is you go to code, go over to code spaces. And if we go to this section, we say new with options, check this out. You go to machine type and here's where you would pick the GPU. So in this case, we can say six core, one GPU, and this gives us uh, a machine that is actually perfect for doing deep learning work, uh, and especially with a language like Rust, which is very performant for inference. We get 112 gigabytes of RAM and also 128 gigabytes uh, of storage and a GPU. And then if I go over to this framework, here we go, we got everything uh, cooking here. So let's go ahead and kick the tires here a little bit. First, let's double check that we've got Rust working. So you do Rust C dash dash version. And this shows us, yep, we have Rust uh, working here. The other thing to uh, pay attention to would be to double check that the um, NVIDIA environment is working. So what I typically do would be, I would say, type in NVIDIA, uh, SMI and this shows us oh, okay great we actually have the CUDA driver and it'll tell us what version of the CUDA driver and if you do the dash L1 this will loop and so if I was doing inference for example I could watch it almost like top for your GPU and it'll show you how much GPU is being utilized so this is important because if you're not sure if the code you're working on is is invoking the GPU this is a great way to double check and make sure that it's actually happening. Drag the terminal up here and then type in uh, the NVIDIA SMI-L1. And there it's going to sit there and wait for inference. And we'll see that it's going to hit this shortly. There we go. We were able to see that it was able to hit 8%. Now, another fun one to play around with, if we go to the README file, would be to do something with the star coder. 
which allows us to uh, build a code example. So let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of a more heavyweight uh, thing here and run this command, which uh, allows us to do a Python function that adds two numbers. Let's run it and then also open this in the other tab so we can see how much GPU it's using. All right, here we go. We see that it was able to peak out at actually 80 something percent. So it was heavily utilizing the GPU for that inference and that's why it was so fast. So this is a great way to get started with really kind of going to the next level with large language models is to run them yourself. Use a tool like the Rust Candle framework to actually uh, you know, invoke the latest versions of large language models and also check the GPU workload.